Angela Merkel in Germany, Michelle Bachelet in Chile. Just, just a few of the women leaders who are blazing trails around the world. In a new lecture series, the Albuquerque International Association will focus on women as global leaders. And that series starts this Sunday, January 26th, at the University of New Mexico Continuing Education Center. NMAF correspondent Farhana Afrid talks about the series with Maria Oborotova. She is president of the International Association and prominent feminist author Martha Bark. And she's with the National Council of Women's Organizations, who is also part of the speaker lineup. Dr. Marina Oborotova and Dr. Martha Bark, it's a pleasure to have you both with us. Um, Marina, I'd like to start off with you. Uh, you dedicated this entire lecture series on examining the role of women as global leaders. Tell us why. Well, you know, the, the lecture series, the title has two parts. The first part is global leadership. That's what we are going to focus on. And the second part is women on the world stage. So we decided to look at global leadership through the prism of women because it is the trend of the 21st century. And even more, it may become one of the defining trends of the 21st century. There are extremely interesting developments around the world. There are three female presidents in Latin America, in Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. There is Angela Merkel, or Angela Merkel, to pronounce it correctly, in Germany. And she's not just the top German leader, she's the leader of the European Union. And that's not all about Germany. 40% of her cabinet are women. And I will give only one example, a killer example, the new Minister of Defense, uh, Ursula von der Leyen. And uh, she has seven children. Not one, not two, seven children. So this is something to think about. Uh, in Asia, you know, that is known for its tradition uh, of women leaders. There is an interesting president of South Korea. They're also, you know, the leader of uh, opposition in Burma. And when it co we come to Africa, it's just absolutely something unprecedented and amazing happening there. And it's not just women as presidents. Yes, Malawi and Liberia elected women as presidents. There is a female prime minister in Senegal. But there are so many women in parliaments. Uh, in South Africa, 42% are women, members of parliament. And so just absolutely amazing. And it is a global trend. And that means that whether we like it or not, the trend is going to continue. And that's why we need to look at it, both men and women. We need to look at it and understand that. So I'm, I'm curious as to why the talks are being presented from the perspective of women and not men, even though your very first lecture is being presented by, by a male. Um, why just from the prism of women, Martha? Well, it, not just from the prism of women. Uh, you, you make a very good point that the first lecture is by a male. He is talking about women. But in order for women to move into leadership in any field, whether it's government, whether it's corporate, wherever it is, men have to be on board. Because, let's face it, men still control most of the major institutions in the world. Uh, the examples we just heard notwithstanding, uh, take the U.S. government. Women are only 17 percent uh, of our legislatures and fewer than that in many states, but certainly at the national level, we've never had a woman president. And in order to, to elevate women, we have to have men that see the value of women's leadership. So I think that what we're trying to say is this is not just about women, it's about women's leadership, but men have to be a part of that trend, and they will be a part. When we talk about uh, global leadership, I mean, Martha, you know that this is, this is not a new concept. You know, no. we've seen women taking on all kinds of global lead leadership roles. So why is it important that we discuss this now here in New Mexico, across the country, and around the world? Well, as uh, Nicholas Kristof said uh, and Cheryl Wu Dunn in Half the Sky, when you eliminate half the talent, uh, you eliminate half of the potential. Uh, for growth, uh, for progress, and for innovative thinking. So it's very important. Women are now the majority of the population in New Mexico and in the United States. We are the majority 
of those who register to vote and we're the majority of the people that actually show up at the polls. So people need to be paying attention to the majority. You know, for so long, women were thought of as a special interest, and you will still hear that. But no, women are the majority. Wouldn't it be interesting if we started talking about men as a special interest group? Interesting point. May I add two Absolutely. things to that? Well, uh, first of all, why from women's perspective? Well, when we choose speakers for the Albuquerque International Association, we just go for the best speakers, for the best experts. So it, we do not use any gender principles here <laughs> with when women to speak or men. We go for the best. And so, yes, our first speaker is a man, and then we have some women. But it doesn't matter whether it's men and women. They're talking about the trends. They're talking about those interesting leaders. So there will be a talk on Latin America on three female presidents in a continent you know, that is not used to have too many female leaders at the very top. Uh, then we are going to have a speaker on Angela Merkel, and then we are going to have a speaker on Asian political women, and we just chose the best speakers that, that, that are there. Uh, another thing, why for New Mexico? Why does it matter for New Mexico? What are we bringing here? Well, uh, you know, first of all, uh, I think that it's role models, and I think here is again we need to go for the best you know i was speaking to somebody in santa and they said oh you know we cater to women that are just starting beginning their small businesses what is there for them role models and inspiration in order to get somewhere you need to aim high not low because otherwise you're not going to get anywhere so it's role models it's inspiration and it's about learning about what's happening the new trends in the world and the new trends is because it's happening on a much wilder scale that it happened before or a larger scale that it happened before okay and so just going back to some of the things you mentioned about having role models examples to emulate how are we doing, Martha, in that realm when we compare uh, how women are doing, say, in the United States to other countries? You know, where are we on that front? Well, we're not doing as well as I wish we were. Uh, on the Global Gender Gap Index, which measures all kinds of things from pay equity to leadership in parliaments and so forth, we are 23rd in the world. And we're going down just a little bit uh, with every measure. In pay equity, where women are very concerned about that. It always polls very high on women's concerns, especially here in New Mexico, because we don't do so well overall. We're 67th in the world, and most people don't realize that. So while we are very high in standard of living, obviously, uh, compared to so many countries in the world and the plight of women, uh, there are places where we can do better, as they say. and. I think the point about role models is a very well taken point. For this reason, not only is it a role model for girls, you can't be a thing until you can imagine it. So girls have to be able to see what is possible, but so do young men. They need to get used to the idea that leadership can be shared, that it is a two-way street, and I think everybody will be better off. And yes, when we're talking about leadership, you know, many of paths to leadership, many of the qualities of the leaders or what qualities leaders should have, it's just a unisex concept, you know, we don't need to divide it here between girls and boys. Right. But in other words, we need to bring everyone to the table, have these conversations in our living rooms, in companies, in, in meetings, because it takes everybody to come together and have this discussion. It, we don't we can't see change happen in just a vacuum. Um, I, I, I want to bring the discussion to a conclusion. Thank you so much, Dr. Martha Burke. Thank you so much, Dr. Marina Abaratova, for coming together with us and having this important discussion. And we will continue this discussion on the web. Thank you, both of you.